Okay, moving on to some new information. We're going to look at expanding out brackets. So we know from BEMA, um, from order of operations in BEMA, that brackets are kind of something that we have to do everything inside of first, usually. But we're going to look at a way to get rid of them without doing the stuff in the middle first, because sometimes we can't, and sometimes we just want to get rid of them. So, you can think of brackets as lots of things, like groups of stuff. And it's a simpler way of writing all those things out. For instance, this bracket here, three bracket stuff bracket, tells me that I've got three lots of stuff. And that basically means three piles of identical stuff. I've got a stuff and a stuff and a stuff. That's three of them. And those ands basically mean plus. I have stuff plus stuff plus stuff, which means I have three stuffs. So three lots of stuff. If we look at the next example, three bracket 2x, well 2x is just some more stuff, and that means I've got three 2x's. I've got a 2x and a 2x and a 2x. An and, in this case, is going to be plus. I've got a 2x and another 2x and another 2x for a total of three 2x's. And if you think about adding like terms like we've been doing, 2x and 2x and 2x are all like terms. In fact, they're all the exact same thing, and if I've got three of them, that's 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6. That's a total of 6x. Six so 6x. Okay. Looking at the next example, if I've got two lots of a plus b, so that's two bracket a plus b, that means I've got an a plus b and another a plus b. Two piles of them, so I could add them together. Well, a plus a as like terms becomes 2a, and b plus b as like terms becomes 2b. So I can think about writing them all out and then adding up like terms, but another way for me to do that is to look back at the original setup here with the brackets. If I take that 2 in front and times it through, that means I know I've got 2 of everything in here. So I've got 2 times the a's, 2a, and I've got 2 times the b's, so I've got 2b. And that gets me there without having to write them all out individually. Same idea here. I've got three 2x's, so what's three times two? That's 6x. So that's basically what we're going to do, is you take the thing in front of the brackets and you times it to every single thing on the inside. And then simplify if possible. So, a few examples to look at here. I'm going to expand them out. So again, I'm going to take the thing in front, in this case a 2, and I'm going to times it through to everything in there. So 2 times x gets me 2x, and 2 times y gets me 2y, and there's still a plus sign in between. So I have 2x plus 2y. Next example. Here I've got 3 of all these things, so I know I have 3 2a's, so that's 3 times 2a gets me 6a. And I've got three b's, so that's plus three b. Again, the sign in the middle stays the same. This one, I actually see, <coughs> hard to imagine it, but I've got negative four of all these things, basically. So, what I'm going to do here, because there's a negative sign, is I'm going to circle the whole thing. And the reason I circle the whole thing is because I want to make sure that I keep that negative with it, that it's not just four, but it's a negative four. So I'm going to take that negative 4, and I'm going to times it to the g, and I'm also going to times it to the negative 7. So negative 4 times g is negative 4 times, you can imagine an invisible 1 with that g, so negative 4 times 1 gets me negative 4g. And now I've got a tricky part here. I've got a negative 4, and it's being times by a negative 7h. Watch out for that negative sign in the middle. So negative 4 times negative 7, Negative times a negative becomes a positive, and 4 times 7 is 28. And now I just write on the h. Sometimes the thing out front can be a letter. So here I see the variable x. So I've got some unknown number of these things, and I'm going to do the same process, just times it straight through. So x times x, well, x times x means x times x. I'm going to add these up. I've got two x's. That becomes x squared. So I get x squared. And I have x times a negative 3. Watching for that negative there. So that means I'm going to have a minus 3x. 
is 3 times x is just 3x. Okay. Another example with a variable in front, this time it is negative. So I'm going to circle the whole thing, negative a, and I'm going to times it through to both the terms inside. So negative a times 5 is going to become negative 5a. If you want to, you can imagine an invisible 1 with a, but it's just negative 5a. The next step here is going to be a negative a times a negative a. So again, negative times negative becomes positive, and a times a is going to give me a squared, because there's two of them there, a times a. Last example, I have 2a out front, and I need to times that through to everything. So I have 2a times 4, well 2 times 4 gives me 8a, and I have 2a times a negative a. So 2, there's no number there, so I can assume an invisible 1, so 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2, because negative and a positive make a negative, negative. and then a times a, again, tells me that it's going to be a squared, because it's a times a. So that's how we do our expanding. So just be careful again, watch out for the negative signs in front, and make sure you times it through to both the bits in between, or in, into the brackets, and there should be a positive or a negative sign in between those terms. So make sure you watch out for those and do them appropriately, like here, a negative a times a negative a becomes positive a squared.